Okay, so today I wanted to put together this, um, hopefully it'll be less than 10 minute video on just, you know, quick and dirty on how to actually acquire firmware from, let's say, a particular IoT device. Um, and then, you know, acquiring that firmware um, and then actually opening it, opening up that firmware and having a look inside to see what kind of what kind of goodies there might be in there that uh, might interest us. So one thing to keep in mind uh, for this particular um, video is that when it comes to firmware, um, one technique does definitely not fit all. Um, <clears throat> because depending, depending on what kind of file system might be in the firmware, there's different, different techniques for actually inspecting that file system that's inside and mounting it. So, for example, most of the firmware you'll see out there is probably using Squash FS. Um, so there's ways for mounting that. There's also ways for extracting it. You can use either DD. You can also Binwalk will do some extraction as well. Um, you can also use the firmware modification kit. Um, there's also techniques for different techniques for mounting JFFS2, JFFS2 file systems. Um, so there, that's a that's a different technique. Um, and then also today, um, what we'll be looking at isn't Squash FS or a JFFS2, um, but it's simply just a GZIP compressed file system inside a firmware update file. So anyway, that's what we'll be having a look at today. Um, so <clears throat> there, and as far as capturing or acquiring firmware, there's also different techniques for that. I mean, you can capture it via you know TCP dump. Um, you can pull it off a manufacturer's website. Um, and there's also techniques for actually just pulling firmware straight off the uh, chips on on any particular on a particular IoT device. So today, what we'll be looking at um, is a firmware file that I captured basically just by running TCB dump on my firewall. Um, so as I was updating, or as, as I had that particular device connected to the network, I actually knew that it was updating. Um, so I simply just captured the um, data and then um, pulled it into Wireshark. So what we have here is a file called updater.bin um, from an IoT device um, that we captured in a PCAP file. So once we've captured that, what we can do is simply, you know, if you want to have a, just a quick look at it, um, you can pull it up and, you know, follow the TCP stream and Wireshark. Um, and as you can see, the whole conversation is like 2.8 megs. So that's a good inter indication that we've actually pulled down some kind of file. Also, there's things in here like zip -a box and Z-Image, which gives another good indication that it's actually a firmware update. So anyway, well, what you can do after this is basically just, you know, get the path here. Also, the server, load that into um, a web browser and it'll just pull down the update update updater.bin file you know straight into um, your vm which in this case i'm using an ubuntu vm all right so we'll close this um minimize wireshark so i've gone ahead and pulled down the updater.bin file and put it in this directory desktop zapato and we'll just list this out. Oh, and by the way, if anybody happens to notice this VM, actually this is from a VM that was provided by Paul Asatorian um, for a class he did at Black Hat on uh, firmware hacking. So anyway, props to him for uh, setting this up and putting the class together, which actually, by the way, was an excellent class. So anyway, so we'll list this out. Um, so you'll see in here we've got updater.bin. So what we can do, and we'll do this the quick and dirty way. Like I said, there's various ways for extracting this stuff out of the firmware, um, DD and so forth. So anyway, we're going to use binwalk. So we'll do binwalk updater.bin. We'll have a look at it. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you will we'll see that there's some gzip compressed data in here. Um, there's a Z image, which is just the um, Linux kernel. And then there's also the root updater.bin. All right. So in this case, we'll just use binwalk minus E to extract um, what it sees in the updater.bin file. And once that's extracted, you'll see that binwalk has created an underscore updater.bin.extracted directory. Um, so we'll change into that directory. And then once we do that, you'll see that there is in fact a Z image file and a root dash updater.bin file. All right, so we'll basically do the same thing 
on root updater dot bin. Uh, just run run that against bin walk. And what you'll see is what looks like basically it's paths, um, Unix paths and so forth. So that's a good indication that there's actually just a, it's just what it, exactly what it says it is, which is just a gzip compressed file system. So what we what we will want to do next is actually, is actually get this um, updater dot or sorry the um, The root dash updater dot bin file. We want to get that uh, mounted so we actually have a look inside and see what's in there. So the first thing we'll do is make a directory for uh, mounting it. Uh, so we'll just do something mount directory temp mount. So that will create the directory underneath there. And then what we'll do next is actually just run. Um, we'll run sudo mount minus o loop root dash updater dot bin and, and we'll mount that on the, into the temp mount. So, And once that's mounted, you'll see right here, um, if you look at Ubuntu, it actually in the um, file manager, it's actually brought it up in here. So but instead of looking at it this way, we're, we will actually do it like this. Um, We'll change directory into temp mount. And voila, you'll see that it's actually looks like a typical, you know, Linux file system structure. So you know, you've got bin and dev and Etsy and home and so forth. Okay, now if you happen to already be familiar with the Linux file system structure, you can simply you know, take a look in things where you probably already know there might be thing, uh, interesting, you know, files to look at. So, for example, like you could do cat etsy um, password, or you could also do cat etsy shadow. So, those are a couple things you could look at right off the bat. You could also look at um, look inside the etsy SSL directory um, to see if there's any interesting certificates in there. Um, and if they've also, whether, the, you know, the firmware has got some private keys and so forth in there. Um, so that's one of the things you can do right off the bat. Now, some of the other things you can do um, is basically just doing a search of the um, entire file system for different um, patterns. So, for example, one of the things you could do is grep minus rnw. Um, let's see what we'll do is, so we want to actually, we'll just do search from this current directory on down. So minus E, let's see. And then whatever, you know, then whatever our pattern is going to be. So let's do something like, um, say password. Now, the other thing you might do, if you get any kind of permission denied, um, what you can do is just simply run it with sudo. All right, so we did like a pattern search for password. You know, we found a couple of files that have password in there. Some of those might not be interesting. Some of them might. Basically, it just involves some time looking through certain things that might look like they're interesting. You can also do a, you know, maybe a pattern search for admin. I mean, there's a couple of files that, for whatever reason, they've got the word admin in there. Um, so that's one way you can do. The other thing you can do, you can also look for file types. So as I mentioned earlier, like certificates or private keys, um, that sort of thing, you can simply do a find period hyphen name. Then let's say we want to look for something like a file type of PEM. Uh, we can do that. And again, like I said, sometimes you need to run this with sudo. And there doesn't seem to be any file types with asterisk.pim. Uh, we could try C or, or CRT, nothing like that. Um, Or we could try comp. Um, sometimes you'll find some interesting stuff in configuration files, like they may have hard-coded passwords or other various things. Um, so that's another file type to look at. 
So those are just a few things you can do um, after capturing a firmware file and opening it up and having a look at it, um, at least in this scenario anyway. So anyway, um, that's about it for this short video. Um, I'll be putting together some other videos, as I mentioned, like maybe how to mount JFFS2 or SquashFS um, after this video. So anyway, um, hope this helps and have a great day.